One thing I've been bad at is getting carried away trying to solve a problem and when I get stuck being too stubborn to ask for help. I think I can just scour the internet and power through it. This isn't the best way to go about things. It's better to ask for help instead of working in circles for hours on end. I feel like regardless of how welcoming or helpful a team can be, it's still a scary thought to ask for help. Because what if they think like, oh, this person doesn't even know how to do this? How does he even have a dev job? And even though in my experience this isn't the case, that thought still lurks in the back of my head. I gotta remember that everyone gets stuck. It's often beneficial to have a second set of eyes on your code. I mean, why do you think there are entire forums and websites like Stack Overflow dedicated to helping developers stuck on a problem? In the work environment, we need to have the same mindset that we have when working in school or working on our own projects. When you're working on your own personal project, what do you do when you're trying to solve a particular problem? You exhaust all resources at your disposal. You scour the internet, you're all over Stack Overflow looking at every single problem that is similar to yours and then what happens when you don't solve that problem well you probably post on a forum or a website similar to Stack Overflow, if not Stack Overflow itself, or you go, you're a part of a Discord server and you ask over there. Or in school, whether you're working on an individual project or a team project, you've done the same, scoured the internet, Stack Overflow, every problem similar to yours, and you haven't found a solution, you either turn to your team to help maybe do a little bit of pair programming, or you go to your professor because that is one of the main reasons of going to school is to learn and you're not afraid to do it because that's kind of why the professor is there is to help you learn. The only difference at work is that you feel like because you're getting paid, you should know how to do these things. You're not paying somebody else for your education, you're getting paid to do a job. You're not getting paid for somebody else to do your job, they're paying you for you to do your job. But is it really beneficial for you or your employer for when you exhaust all possibilities to then go and work in circles on the same problem, thinking that you will solve it even though, like I said, you have exhausted all possibilities? It's a ruthless cycle because you feel like you should be able to figure out this problem. You working on this two hour task for one hour, you get stuck and you exhaust all possibilities within that first hour. And then instead of asking someone for help to try to break down that barrier, you continue working in circles. You think that there's some crevice of the internet or a book that will help you solve this, and maybe there is, but it takes you two or three extra hours to fix this problem, and then where are you now? Or you don't find that particular solution at all, and another three hours has passed, and now it's even more scary to ask for help. I don't know, maybe I'm a weirdo and that is just me, but what I have found to help with that particular problem is time boxing. The overall idea behind time boxing is allocating a certain amount of time to a particular task or project or business and then getting up and moving on to something else. This is something that Elon Musk uses considering he's doing a thousand different things a day. He needs to be able to get to each one of those things every single day. He says, all right, I'm gonna spend three hours engineering for Tesla, three hours engineering for SpaceX, two hours working on business at Tesla, and then one hour ranting on Twitter. Now I try to use this in my day-to-day -day life, working on the YouTube business side of things, working on the video side of things, working on my own coding projects, so on and so forth. I think we can take the idea of time boxing and apply that to what we've been discussing today, and that is the amount of time before you ask somebody for help. I'm sure many of y'all work in some sort of agile methodology where at the beginning of each sprint, you estimate the amount of time that it'll take to do each task. What you can do if it is a one hour task is that if you get stuck on a particular problem, you make sure it doesn't extend that full one hour where you're working in circles and you haven't exhausted all possibilities. So time box it for one hour, and if you still haven't completed that task, that's when you can go to a senior dev, a tech lead, or someone on your team to ask for help. What will happen here is that whoever you ask, more often than not, will have a little bit more knowledge or you're getting a second set of eyes on the code, so they will help you get unstuck from that problem so you're able to move forward with the overall task. Or what has happened to me plenty of times is that you opened up a whole new can of worms, something that you really couldn't foresee with the task at hand, and that is something more suitable for a senior dev or maybe some other task needs to be created because, like I said, a whole new can of worms and this isn't something that should take one hour, it should take a whole entire day. You don't know what you don't know. So when you hit that brick wall, it is best to ask for help. If you don't ask for help, you won't get anything done. If you don't get anything done, why would your work keep you around? It also shows initiative when you're asking for help. It shows that you admit defeat, 
You want to learn from this particular problem in order to be better prepared for your next task at hand. Another way to do this is that if you have a one hour task and you hit a problem 10 minutes into that task, it may not make sense to try to work in circles or exhaust all possibilities over that next 50 minutes. So maybe then you will set your own time box for 30 minutes or 20 minutes. And you want to go through all possibilities. Maybe you didn't exhaust all of them, but to be more efficient, once you hit that time frame, that 20 minutes, and you still haven't solved the problem, ask somebody for help. I would also recommend sometime within this time box is using the rubber ducky method, where basically you try to explain the problem to a rubber duck on your table or just to yourself. Think about how you're going to ask for help, because many times when you formulate how to describe the problem at hand, you're able to solve it yourself. This is very much a case by case or in our instance, task by task basis on how you approach time boxing, but find a method that works for you, that works best for your team and stick to it. I really hope you all enjoyed this video because I've been trying to figure out new ways to make my videos more entertaining while also being more informative. And this was the first crack at a new way. So if you did, please share your thoughts by giving a big thumbs up, leave more specific thoughts down in the comment section below and consider subscribing if you wanna see more videos like this. I'll see you on the next one.